Later tonight, catch The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. And don't miss Late Night with David Letterman, the brightest young comedian around, says the Indianapolis star. Tomorrow night on Fame, Bruno finds love with a beautiful dancer. And Arnold takes to his toes when he meets a great ballet impresario on different strokes. Then on Gimme a Break, the Chiefs bent out of shape when Nell's ex-husband comes to visit. After that, on Hill Street Blues, a brutal mass murder sends Ferrillo on a gang crackdown. Tomorrow on NBC. On NBC Nightly News, Reagan and Black America. A full report tomorrow. Coming up next, the News 4 New York, a last desperate effort at the United Nations to head off a British invasion of the Falklands as the British launch a new attack. And a maneuver in Albany that could just deliver a veto-proof death penalty bill. A new one-a-day pill for arthritis, and Chuck will have a special report on frontiers for future Marco Polos. Well, I think Marco Polo was doing what he wanted to do. And I think he saw their challenge. And I think that we have somewhat similar uh, feeling. We feel the challenge. Uh, I think most of us do it for that purpose. Panasonic introduces the world's lightest, smallest VHS video recorder. When linked to this Panasonic video camera, this system responds as quickly as the action unfolds, focusing automatically, adjusting to changing light instantly. It even works in low light. And with a new Panasonic tape, it records for eight hours. Eight hours. Omnivision, there's no other portable video system like Panasonic's. It's amazing what Panasonic did to Regivision. Omnivision. If you had a favorite airplane, this one's going to take its place. United 767, with a new fuel-efficient engine, more powerful, yet quieter, with computerized instruments to show the smoothest, fastest flight line home. United helped design this 767 with wider seats, 88% of them on an aisle or window. United 767, this fall. At Chase, we do things you might not expect bankers to do. Morning, Joe. Like helping our customers get more for their money, even if it costs us money. I showed Charlie Greenbaum he could earn more interest with a Chase CD than with his Chase passbook and get interest on checking free. If your bank isn't doing that for you, they don't deserve your business. And if we aren't, we don't deserve it either. The Chase is on. Night People, a world apart. A News 4 special report tomorrow at 6. This is News 4 New York with Chuck Scarborough and Sue Simmons. Good evening. The British launched new attacks on the Falklands and could mount an invasion any time now. Reports from the Falklands tonight say a British destroyer bombarded Argentine positions south of Port Stanley while Harrier jets attacked the East Falklands. No British losses reported, and at the United Nations tonight, there was talk of one final desperate effort to head off a British invasion. Dave Gilbert has more on that story. The peace talks here at the UN are at a very dangerous point. Time left for negotiations must be measured in hours. That's the assessment of UN Secretary General Perez de Cuellar. After a closed-door session with the UN Security Council, the Secretary General read a statement saying he's made a last-ditch plea to Britain and Argentina. I have spoken to both President Galtieri and Prime Minister Thatcher to express my views and my very great concern. The cost of failure in terms of human lives and suffering is too high to permit me to give up my efforts. Earlier today in London, Prime Minister Thatcher, during a radio interview, said after studying Argentina's replies to its peace proposal, a big gap remains. The Argentinians invaded to get sovereignty. And what they're trying to do is say, we'll only leave provided we keep sovereignty. That, I mean, is like a burglar saying, I'll only leave your house if I can take everything I've stolen with me. 
Meanwhile, in Argentina today, newspaper headlines were grim. Pirates are about to invade. Virtual breakdown at UN. Many Argentines stood outside newspaper offices to get the latest news. Tonight, Argentine's foreign minister told reporters Argentina is ready to continue negotiating and said Mrs. Thatcher will be responsible if the talks fail. Tomorrow morning, New York time, the British government is expected to release a paper making its position on the peace talks clear and to tell us what is going on. So most UN observers believe we will find out within the next 12 hours whether the peace talks failed or succeeded. At this point, everything points to failure. Chuck? Israel's Prime Minister Begin survived a no-confidence motion today by the smallest possible margin, one vote. It was the most serious challenge to Begin since he took office five years ago. It was set up when two members of his coalition quit to protest his banning of El Al flights on the Sabbath. That created an even split in the Knesset between Begin's Likud bloc and the opposition led by the Labour Party. That no-confidence motion was defeated because one anti-Begin member abstained. Actress Sophia Loren is spending the night in jail. She flew back to Italy today after a two-year absence, saying she wanted to visit her mother, her family, and her friends. But as soon as she got off the plane, she was whisked off to begin serving a 30-day sentence for tax evasion. Officials hint she may not have to serve the entire sentence, but it's not hard time. The jail is run by nuns, has no bars. At the trial of John Hinckley Jr. today, a psychiatrist testified that when Hinckley shot President Reagan, he was more insane than Travis Bickle in the movie Taxi Driver. Dr. David Baer said Hinckley was so mentally ill, he could not have planned or premeditated the shooting. Twice during today's court session, Hinckley got so restless, he got up and walked out of the courtroom. Some 100 prisoners will walk out of the Hudson County Jail June 1st because a judge says the place is so crowded it's unconstitutional. Judge Gregory Castano came up with a simple plan to ease the crowding. He ordered that all sentences for non-indictable offenses be cut in half as of June 1st. Two years ago, a Queen's Honor student named Stephen Zwickert was shot dead as he returned home from his high school, from the prom. He apparently refused to give his class ring to some young toughs and one of them shot him. Well, tonight, one of the suspects in that killing, 18-year-old Randolfo Maldonado, was found guilty of felony murder. He faces a prison term of 25 years to life. In Albany, the legislature put off debate on restoring the death penalty because sponsors of the bill have a new idea. They say the jury should have the option of calling for the death penalty or life in prison without parole. Gabe Pressman has more on this story. Could supporters of capital punishment muster the 100 votes they needed in the assembly to override Governor Carey's expected veto? This was the basic question here today, transcending the familiar debate on the merits of capital punishment. But then there was a surprise development. This man, this Assemblyman Stephen Sanders of Manhattan, introduced an amendment to the capital punishment bill that this man, Vincent Graber of Erie, leader of the fight to enact the death penalty, liked. A bit difficult to understand since Sanders is against capital punishment. His amendment would give jurors the opportunity to choose either death or life imprisonment with no chance of getting out. Action on the proposed amendment was put off until next week. And Graber, who earlier had been very pessimistic about getting the 100 votes needed to override a carry veto, now seems encouraged. I feel my position has been enhanced uh, by, uh, you know, uh, the opposition shooting himself in the foot. Uh, that's the way I, uh, I think that's the best connotation. In other words, you, you've gotten an unexpected gift from the people who are against the death penalty. Well, they opened up Pandora's box and I was only too willing to walk in. I am not at all sure that uh, this amendment uh, would change uh, anybody's mind on the, uh, on the bill itself. Did this come as a, as a great surprise to you? Yes. What do, you, what do you make of it? I mean, do you, do you think that this is... I think the people who were opposed to the death penalty were taking a, a, a gambit that backfired on them. The moral question for each assembly member remains, is it right for the state to take a life? And in a sense, this amendment offers a cop-out. It won't be the assembly members who will decide whether or not to impose capital punishment. The buck will be passed to each separate juror sitting in each separate trial. Gay Pressman, News 4, Albany. And tonight, Governor Kerry said that he will veto any bill restoring the death penalty with or without the option mentioned, as he has done in the past. A chilling development tonight in the Senate's investigation of Labor Secretary Raymond Donovan. A committee is looking into a supposed link between Donovan and the mob, and now a staff investigator on the Senate payroll has received two death threats.
A former police officer in Roselle Park, New Jersey, Carl Sesteri, was indicted today on charges of aggravated manslaughter in the shooting death of a fellow officer at a party. It happened last month in Sesteri's home in Plainfield at a party to celebrate his resigning from the Roselle Park Police Force to join the Army. Today's indictment says Sesteri recklessly caused the death of John Mariarelli, Jr. by using a firearm with extreme indifference to the value of human life. And in the Bronx today, two suspects in the bungled Brinks holdup in Rockland County, Donald Weems and Edward Joseph, were ordered held without bail in another Brinks holdup. It took place last June in Co-op City, the robbers getting away with nearly $300,000 after killing one guard. And Bernadine Dorn of the Old Weather Underground was jailed today for contempt when she refused to give a sample of her handwriting to a grand jury. It is investigating a possible radical conspiracy involving the Rockland Brinks heist and other robberies. As News 4 New York continues, Islander Mania hits Long Island tonight as the fans parade through the streets celebrating the Stanley Cup victory. Marv will have the story of the Boston-Philly NBA playoffs and more. And Chuck looks at some frontiers for future Marco Polos. Tonight, News 4 New York is sponsored by Piaget Watches and by Barney's. The Piaget Polo. Rugged, yet elegant. The Piaget Polo, water-resistant, electronic quartz. Carved from a solid block of 18-karat gold, link by link. Handcrafted in Lakoto Face, Switzerland, the ultimate sports watch for dynamic people. The Piaget Polo. Available at Van Cleef & Arpels, 5th Avenue at 57th Street. Last year in New York, there were 200 nights at Lincoln Center to wear a tuxedo or evening dress from Barney's. Twelve weekends of pro tennis for sportswear by Burberry and Aquascooter. Enough interviews to employ Hickey Freeman, Oxford, and Ralph Lauren. Even 79 days to make full use of Barney's Rainmaker room. Truly, a men's and women's store like Barney's couldn't happen anyplace else but New York. It's microwave. Microwave. Microwaves at a and Microwaves by Bill Blast. Harbor Casual. Jansen. Oleg Cassini. La Blanca. DeWeef. Roxanne. Going places. Microwave stripes. Up, down. All around. Microwave polka dots. Microwave ruffles. Microwave bows. Microwave oh. Microwaves at a and Bears. Bears. Sassy. It's microwaves to sun in. Money. Stretch in. Women. Dive in. Skinny stripes. Hot colors. It's microwaves. Bold. Beautiful. All you. All you. It's microwaves. Micro microwaves at a and Terrific. WRFM is your key to relaxation. Unwind with WRFM, FM 105. <sighs> well, on Long Island tonight, it was a time for celebration, a warm welcome home for some heroes off the ice. It was last Sunday in Vancouver. The Islanders beat the Canucks to sweep the championship series in four games and to win their third Stanley Cup in three years. Some 35,000 fans braved the drizzle tonight to line the parade route stretching four and a half miles into Uniondale. The team members and their wives, riding in a flatbed truck, heard an endless refrain of, we're number one, we're number one. The Islanders are indeed the first American-based team in the National Hockey League to win three Stanley Cups in a row. And Mike Bossy voted the most valuable player in the playoffs, promised the team plans to keep right on winning in the future. And Clark Gillies added, we are celebrating tonight, and we'll never get tired of that. And the Boston Celtics know the feeling, don't they? Especially if they did pretty well without Nate Archibald, Marv. Yes, who said the Celtics were dead? You did, Marv. Right, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Marv, wrong. They are very much alive in Boston tonight. The Celtics walloped the Sixers, 114-85. This despite the absence of tiny Archibald. So Philly now leads the series three games to two. It was not a night for the Sixers. Turnover City in the early going. Excellent defensive pressure by Boston all night long. And Robert Parrish, who'd been having his problems, came back with a strong game at one point seven of eight from the floor he scored 26 here is Parrish again doing it on the final 15 of his 26 points in the first quarter putting it away early and Larry Bird hit for 20 a nice move here by Bird also had 19 rebounds Celtics winning by 29 so there will be a game six in Philadelphia on Friday night and Hubie Brown who handled the color commentating on the Philly Boston telecast will be in New York tomorrow as Hubie and Dave DeBuscher will be officially named as 
as the new coach and general manager tandem of the New York Knicks. Press conference tomorrow. Out at Shea tonight, the Mets made an eight out of the last ten, a record of 21 and 17. They beat Tom Seaver and the Reds by the score of four to two. So Seaver is now one up and five down. And Dave Kingman got right to him in the first Kong with two on. It is number 13 of the season. He leads the major leagues. The Mets off to a three nothing start. Kingman responding to baseball's newest tradition, the curtain call. And Tom Seaver added to his repertoire a folly floater. What is going on? But Dave Rasich did not go for it. Cincinnati offense tonight. Dan Dreesen with two home runs. This with one out in the ninth inning, but that was it against former Red Pat Zachary. He went all the way on a seven hitter, making the move successfully out of the bullpen. Zachary now three up and one down. Mets four, Reds two. Mets playing good baseball. Out in Kansas City, the Yankees closing out their road trip, and they have just defeated the Royals by the score of three to two. Greg Nettles, who returned to the lineup last night with this RBI single in the second Barry Foote coming around a score and the Yankees take a 1-0 lead on the Royals. Now in the fourth, some Billy Ball baseball. Nettles stealing second. Greg with the green light and it paid off. He advanced to third moments later and then was squeezed home by Willie Randolph. This gave the Yanks a 3-1 lead. This turned out to be the game winner. Tommy John the winner with help from the Goose. Yanks after losing three straight have won two in a row from the Royals. Elsewhere, a American League in the 12th, first place Boston and Seattle tied. Detroit made it seven straight. They are coming on in the ninth, California over Milwaukee. Seventh inning, it is Baltimore leading Minnesota. Toronto with three in the eighth beat Cleveland. And in the seventh, Chicago leads Texas. Back in the National League, the leaders in the West, Joe Torre's Braves beat the Montreal Expos by the score of nine to one. Dale Murphy looking to keep pace with Dave Kingman hitting his 12th to give the Braves a three nothing lead in the fourth. Bob Horner had four hits, three RBIs. Montreal losing pitcher Ray Burris now 0-7. The other National League games, fourth inning, Eastern leading St. Louis, trailing San Diego. Bottom of the ninth, Houston leads Philly, and it was Pittsburgh over San Francisco. Well, today opening day at Belmont, start of the 70-day spring meet, featured eighth race, $55,000 Shuvi handicap, proved to be merely a workout for the winner number one, Anti Lib with Jacinto Vasquez. Anti Lib winning by eight lengths. No one else in sight, paying $8.40 to win number two. Tina Tina Two finished second. And out in Portland, they're in the first half. The Cosmos trailing the surprising Portland Timbers to zip. John Bain of Portland splitting the defense to beat the Cosmo goalie Hubert Birkenmeyer. That made it 1 0. It is now 2 0. Cosmos trailing. And still nothing to report on the proposed move of the Colorado Rockies to the Meadowlands. The NHL Board of Governors could not reach agreement again today. A special panel will meet again on this subject sometime next week. Frank, one of the major stumbling blocks, as you have pointed out on many occasions, many occasions. how to realign the Smythe division with the Rockies moving eastward. You may have a, uh, a suggestion, but we'll get to that get at a later date. Yes. Uh, sports. <laughs> Much later. Yes. yes. Thank you, Mark. Well, still ahead as we continue on News 4 New York, a special report on frontiers from future Marco Polos, a new weapon in the fight in the battle of arthritis, and Frank with a look at the weather. Toyota dealers in this area are receiving their biggest deliveries of 82 Toyotas ever. A fresh inventory of 25,000 quality-built Toyota cars and trucks. It's special delivery days. Now could be your best chance to buy the Toyota you want, equipped the way you want, without waiting. Special deliveries of Toyota Corollas, Celicas, Starlets, Tercels, trucks. It's a Toyota buyer's market, and your Toyota dealer wants to deal. Look for this sign of participating Toyota dealers. Let's go. Tonight, the sports report is sponsored by Toyota dealers. Fortune Off Westbury announces the grand opening sale of our new backyard store in Wayne, New Jersey. We're number one because we sell more outdoor furniture than any other store. Fortune Off sells more $360 Redwood seating groups for only $180 than anyone else. We sell more $100 Finkel and Sun Air umbrellas for only $50 than anyone else. It's the grand opening sale of outdoor furniture at Fortune Off Westbury and now Wayne, New Jersey. If you run a sizable growing company in New York, question, can you ever get to see the president of your bank? We're not in Fortune's 500. This is New York, not Podunk. I doubt my bank officer gets to see him. If you're missing that, follow me to Sterling Bank. 
At Sterling, when a business like yours has business to discuss, the doors are open all the way to the top. You can see the president or the chairman. We wouldn't have it any other way. Sterling Bank, where the medium-sized company never feels small. At Fortune Off Westbury, this week is luggage sale week. Our entire stock is on sale. Many are half price. Famous names like American Tourister and Verde in nylons and vinyls, all on sale. $20 totes, on sale at $7. $50 Pullmans are now $15. Fortune Off's Jumbo Pullmans on wheels, originally $60, now $24. And if you buy this four-piece set, you'll get this weekender free. This week is luggage sale week at Fortune Off Westbury, the only store of its kind. For a limited time, France's best-loved champagne, Moet, is available at specially reduced prices for the holidays. Some potential good news for arthritis sufferers. The Eli Lilly Drug Company announced today it has a one-a-day pill that can reduce the symptoms of both rheumatoid and osteoarthritis. The pill is called Oriflex, and it seems to have few side effects, but it won't be made available to the public until after a three-year test on 1,600 patients. I hope it works out okay. Yeah, what we have available right now is a terrific weather forecast. I think, be good weather, I think that pill is forecast. available now, but they're doing a three-year test to follow up. Well, yeah. I mean, can you get it? Sure. Oh, okay. You can also get the weather if you want. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. uh -huh. It is 73 degrees. The high today was 74. The relative humidity is 76%. The wind is south. It is 11 miles an hour, and the barometer is steady. Our satellite photograph uh, indicated that this very humid air was moving our way. We were expecting showers and thunderstorms. Uh, yesterday, widely scattered showers over the eastern half of the country. Note how that big area of clouds and low pressure drifted eastward. So the result is a line of showers and thunderstorms. Bridgeport just had a thunderstorm in the last hour, and there are scattered showers all around the city. So over the next few hours, still some more showers in store for us. But as the low deepens and moves off into the east, behind us some cooler, drier air, and that will come in on Friday, which means that at least for the next 24 hours, moist southwesterly winds will prevail. And that means another sticky day tomorrow, another chance of widely scattered showers and thunderstorms once again forming, and they could hit anywhere in the tri-state area. Our forecast for the metropolitan area for tonight, cloudy skies. There are some scattered showers and thunderstorms still about. Fog developing during the morning hours, low temperatures in the 60s here in the city. For tomorrow, again, a glimpse of sun through the clouds and hazy, warm and sticky, and a high temperature of 82 degrees here in the city. Again, during the afternoon and evening, scattered showers and thunderstorms will pop up, and they will be roaming around. And then after that, we go to the clearing trend. So for Thursday, variable cloudiness, 82 degrees, a chance of scattered showers and thunder showers. For Friday, fair, less humid, drier air will move in. A high of 75, and that starts us off with a nice weekend, Marv. Saturday, mostly fair. Temperatures in the mid-70s for Sunday, partly cloudy. Temperatures in the mid-70s, and Monday, mostly fair skies. So just bear with us another 24 hours, will you, Sue? I don't think so, Frank. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> but I'll do it. What the heck, Frank? You need a friend, don't you? Still ahead. There is more bad news on the economy. The Commerce Department reported today that during the first year's quarter, the, the year's first quarter, rather, the American after-tax profits for American corporations plunged 17.5%. It was one of the biggest declines on record. And some bad news also today for 40 executives of the Daily News. They were told their jobs are being eliminated as part of the cost-cutting effort to keep the paper in business. Look, we understand how you feel. We know what you... You understand nothing! Now, thieves, pimps, prostitutes, and drug dealers, beware, because John D'Angelo is declaring his own personal war on crime. I'm John D'Angelo! By fighting back. Starch Friday, Low State, Orpheum, 34th Street Showplace, and a theater near you. Keeping fit has become an American passion. Today, over 55 million people have taken the plunge, exercising regularly to keep their bodies fit. Well, for all those people who keep their bodies in shape, Calvin Klein brings you something beautiful to slip those bodies into. Calvin Klein, active wear. 
the packages picked up by the leading Air Express companies, thousands don't quite make it to their destination the next day. That means thousands of people are absolutely, positively in big trouble. Airborne doesn't think this is a record anyone should be proud of. This attitude is why people who started using Airborne as the alternative now make us the standard. At Airborne, we're shooting for 100% on-time delivery. And whatever it takes, we're going to make it. Airborne overnight. We're shooting for 100%. Do you know me? With this hat, I'm recognized as a gourmet cook. With this hat, I'm recognized as a long ball hitter. Without a hat, I guess I'm just another adorable redhead. So, I carry the American Express card. With this, I'm treated like an MVP, a most valuable person. To apply for a card, look for this display wherever the card is welcomed. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Listen to WPAT, FM 93 or AM 93. It gives the people who live in the world show place a place to relax. You probably remember Mayor Koch's comment about the suburbs being sterile, etc. Well, a high school class from West Springfield, Massachusetts, is being deprived of a field trip to Greenwich Village. That's where Koch lives, away from Gracie Mansion. A higher up at that school short-circuited the trip, saying he doesn't think that type of society should be exposed as a role model for our children. No comment from his honor. The final episode of the NBC miniseries Marco Polo was broadcast earlier tonight, and by the network's reckoning, if you watched all or part of it, you were among 100 million Americans, making Marco Polo one of the most watched dramatic programs ever broadcast. Well, since Marco Polo's time, mankind has been poking and prodding his environment for 700 years. And after 700 years of exploration, could there be any new frontiers left for future Marco Polos? Yes, according to astronaut Jack Lausma, two big ones. I think that there are Marco Polos who could venture to the bottoms of the oceans and uh, learn what's there for the good of us all. I think ultimately that uh, people will go to Mars. We are go for main engine ignition. Seven, Eight, seven, six, six. We have main engine ignition. In many ways, the contrast between the exploration of the frontier of space and Marco Polo's exploration of the Chinese-Mongolian frontier could not be more stark. Today's journeys into Earth orbit are, above all, triumphs of technology. The explorers are kept safe and comfortable in a technological womb, linked by an electronic umbilical to a cast of thousands back on Earth. Uh, Roger, Columbia, we'll do that. And they travel at speeds Marco Polo never could have imagined. Roger, uh, we're getting the scene from the Delta camera now. Uh, it's a really beautiful sight, Colonel. For space shuttle pilots Jack Lausma and Gordon Fullerton, an eye blink equaled a day's travel by Marco Polo. In orbit, they covered five miles every second. San Francisco to New York in 10 minutes. It took Marco Polo 24 years to journey from Venice to the Orient and back. As they streaked over the territory Marco Polo discovered, the shuttle pilots felt a new appreciation for his difficulties and achievements. That middle part of his route is the most forbidding looking place that we saw in the entire uh, mission. Uh, and, and we tried uh, intently to find signs of man down there with no luck whatsoever. What? What is it? It's a trail sign. Signs of man, the quest of explorers throughout the ages. And despite the differences technology has wrought, there is another common bond between the astronauts and that young Italian explorer who lived 700 years ago. Well, I think Marco Polo was doing what he wanted to do. And I think he saw out there a challenge, a frontier that had to be explored. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have somewhat similar uh, feelings. Uh, we're doing what we like to do. We feel that what we're doing is worthwhile. Again, we feel the challenge. Uh, I think most of us do it for that purpose. Francisco to New York in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, hard to believe, isn't it? Whoa, it'd be nice to be able to do it, though. It certainly would. Yeah. That's our news for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. Lauren Bacall in Woman of the Year. Also starring Harry Gardino. The British way. It means the way we care for you, both in the air and once you're here, 
It means double-decker buses, royal coaches, or a rental coach of your own. British Airways will arrange it at low rates. The British way means friendly inns, jolly country pubs, and a comfortable bed at a very comfortable price. British Airways will take more care of you. Announcing an offer from Sunoco that's going to stop drivers in their tracks. This beautiful 12-ounce glass with its unusual textured pattern is yours free. But there's a string attached. You have to come in and fill up twice with any one of Sunoco's quality grades of gas. Why are we giving away such a beautiful glass? We're hoping to pull in a lot of new customers. At National Bank of North America, we think straight talk is more valuable than gifts. We give gifts. But when we give gifts, we give gifts for passbook and statement savings, now accounts, all savers, for 30 month and six month CDs. Get some straight talk about our savings programs. Maybe win a once in a lifetime trip for two. When we talk, we talk straight. When we give, we give big. National Bank of North America, the Straight Talk Bank. There goes another Heineken. There goes another Cronenborg. There goes another Heineken. There goes another Cronenborg. In Europe, the bottle of beer they export most is Heineken. And the bottle of beer they drink and enjoy most is Cronenborg. Now in America, as in Europe, people are discovering they like Heineken. But Cronenborg, that's love. Cronenborg, Europe's number one bottle of beer. This has been a presentation of News 4 New York, which has been honored by both the Associated Press and United Press International State Broadcasters for the best regularly scheduled news programs. Willie rejects Jason's warnings on Dark Shadows tomorrow afternoon at 4.